Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I'll be your Gaming Monk for the evening. Let's talk about Magic the Gathering, Richard Garfield's standard bearer of the trading card game, a game that's so ubiquitous that I don't need to delve into a real explanation to its mechanics. While there's many aspects within this game of interdimensional magicians that can be covered, the numerous sets, flavor texts, and novella, would lend itself well to role-playing games, but it's only been in recent years that any tacit acknowledgement would be given officially. And since we're dealing with Wizards of the Coast, the approach was inadequate, due to just being a campaign setting book for the highly overexposed Ravnica block for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. While D&D did serve as an inspiration for magic, to the point of Garfield likening a magic deck to a character sheet, the eccentricities of magic and D&D are not entirely the same without extensive house ruling. Unsurprisingly, this has led fans to try and attempt their own takes on an attempt to make a magic TRPG. However, many of these are built upon the assumption that you're building on the cards from the source material. This is where this week's subject matter comes in, opting away from being a card RPG hybrid and instead building upon a setup that takes a darker spin, with corruption and the price of power being a major theme. How does it hold up? Let's find out. Character creation is an affair rooted in one of the two pillars, and we'll be exploring this with a shade mage named Karo Khan. The first step is build option, which is where we determine if a shade mage will specialize in one of the five dominions as a mono shade, or opt for a generalized approach as a dual shade. We'll be going with a mono shade in this case. This grants us five shade points in a dominion. In our case, destruction. We also gain ten library points, a five point shade capacity for chaos, combustion, and passion, a shade siphon and stained dice of 5d6, a shade stain of 2+, plus, five wounds, and five toughness. Now, shade scores determine how easy it is to pull power from shade vessels, and this is listed as five for destruction's three attributes, chaos, combustion, and passion. On the other hand, attributes are increased by library points, which are capped with the aforementioned shade cap. In our case, we'll go with 5 in Combustion, 3 in Passion, and 2 in Chaos. The combination of library points also determines what skills we have access to. Namely, a 5 in Bluff, Insight and Perception, 3 in Endurance, History, and Streetwise, and 2 in Acrobatics, Diplomacy, Intimidate, and Thievery. Secondly, Shade Vessels. This is an item that allows a Shade Mage to interact with the Shade. Namely, a handheld item that is tied to the ability to cast spells. Now, in our case, we'll be creating what we'll call the Axe of Ashes, replicating the destruction-centric spells that we'll be using. This plays a factor into how much shade has been siphoned through the shade siphon pool, and the die result to determine whether or not a shade is stained, i.e. colored or colorless. Next is Aspects, powers that allow for personalization of shade mages. We can choose two or three aspects with an attribute requirement of six. In doing so, we gain the associated shade Affliction as well. And we'll go with Explosive Movement and Heart Seeker for our aspects. This also means that we gain two afflictions. Water must never touch us, and we must never be ignored. Now, fourth is Artifacts, the catch-all for equipment, weapons, armor, and so on. We can have three artifacts at the start, in which case we'll go with a Battle Axe, a Chest Plate, and a Shield. Lastly, Spells, for the Mage part of Shade Mage. Spells are created from Templates but we may only select templates from attributes that we have library points in. We'll go with a few templates for each that we have library points in. For this, we'll go with Lightning Strike, Chain Lightning, Burning Inquiry, and Chaos Shade Mage. Character creation leans on the straightforward end of things, with the main choice being based on whether the Shade Mage chooses to focus on a single shade color or diverse color setup. The only real issue I have is with Shade Vessels, specifically the descriptiveness of it. There's not a whole lot of examples on what a good or bad example of a, of a vessel is. Beyond that, there's an issue of character creation not being self-contained. I had to do a fair bit of jumping through the process, especially since there's parts that break the flow of the matter. Navigation here is key. Shades of Dominion uses a 3d6 base core mechanic, where these die are rolled and compared to a target number. 
However, combat is a contested role based on the skills used for attack and defense, with toughness acting as a safety net that has to be overcome to inflict wounds. When it comes to casting spells, there's a few aspects to consider. First is the sip level, the amount of shade in a vessel. This is rolled to the d6 pool as mentioned before, and doing so reduces the amount of shade that can be drawn, determining the minimum die face needed to generate shade. Afterward, this shade is rolled to be stained, converting the unstained shade into shade that is stained with one of the five types. Spellcasting is automatic, but when spells are cast, they are exhausted, which can be recovered based on the spell battery roll for that particular spell. However, spell use has a cost, and this is where shade afflictions come into play. Afflictions are rules that one has to follow, and violating these rules results in shade burn. This is resolved as a D6 per ticked box of Shade Burn. Now, even worse is what's known as Refraction, the fate feared by all Shade Mages. This is increased by violating Afflictions, taking 7 damage from Shade Burn, or filling out Affliction completely. When Refraction is completely filled, they lose their Aspects and Shade abilities, and roll a D6 for each Shade Point and Aspect. Every result of 4 or higher causes them to lose a wound, as well as losing all access to the Shade, but the possibility of regaining a new dominion as a soft reset. Afflictions kind of remind me of the limit breaks in Exalted, and they'll likely be just as scub. There will be some who don't care for having a compulsory action in play. Personally, I'm not sure how I feel about the expiration date with the setup, but the biggest issue I have is the lack of some kind of advancement system. I'm not expecting levels, but I think an experience as currency system might work fine. I came at this with the approach of looking at like a magic TRPG. All things considered, that's not entirely fair since it's clearly doing its own thing inspired by magic, but not necessarily trying to replicate it. This is especially due to its magic system not exactly being flexible in a wide net setup. This is a dark fantasy setup, not a fantasy gestalt like magic is. But let me make one thing clear. Shades of Dominion is a game that is rife with potential. Unfortunately, I cannot grade potential only what's in front of me. The biggest issue that I have with the book is organization and navigation. There's no table of contents and the index could stand to be larger. More importantly, I think some summary sections are needed for some of the mechanics, especially when it comes to the use of shades and shades vessels due to it being a fairly unorthodox approach. That being said, the highest grade I can give Shades of Dominion is playable. This is something I could see getting better, but it's got a bit of a ways to go in organization and navigation, as I said before, before that happens. The best I can say is to get back on the grind, and I will look forward to seeing how it grows.